This is Bishop Noel Jones, and welcome again to Fresh Oil. I know that you have been enjoying this great series, Back on Track, and particularly this message, Let God Direct It From Here. I messed my life up. I mean, I totally shipwrecked, car wrecked, plane wrecked. I've done everything crazy directing my life. I need a great director, and the greatest of all is God. So let's go into the sanctuary and hear this marvelous message, Let God Direct it from here. Godliness is practical. It is not something that is left just for church, but it's something you can use with a wife, you can use with a husband, you can use with your children, you can use with your friends, you can use on your job, you can use at home because the wisdom of God has got to be expressed by the child of God. Uh, I wouldn't want to raise my kids and at 40 years old, uh, they don't know any of my wisdom and they don't express my wisdom I don't only want them to look like me I want them to overcome like me achieve like me have an attitude of victory like me whatever it is it needs to be expressed when you see a child of God you see an expression of the mystical an expression of the incarnate you see a spirit that says God is in me and I cannot be defeated Oh, I feel this thing today. It is here then that in decision making, I have difficulty. And I must admit that I oftentimes wonder why do I make such decisions. And, and, and for most of us, one of the most difficult parts of our life is in making decisions. How do I know this is the right one? Have I studied this thing long enough to make this decision? And sometimes decisions are commitments of life. Uh, one decision can take you or break you. Just, just one decision. And, 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 and the, the greater the decision, the more you ponder it. And then you say to yourself, am I thinking about this right? Uh, do I have all the information that I need? Or have I factored in that I don't have all the information when I make this decision? Is this a decision by faith? Or is this a decision by sight? Is it a hybrid? Is it a mixture of the two where I have gathered all I can gather and now I have to depend on God for the rest. Can I make this decision by myself? Or do I need to confer? Do I need somebody to help me? The, the, the greater the decision, the more, the more stress that goes with making it. Because uh, the greater the decision, the more commitment of life and, and, and the more significant it is to be right. There are some decisions you can make and not lose very much doing it. But there are other decisions that if you make it, you can lose your mind, you can lose your emotion, you can lose your place in life, you can lose your money, and ultimately you can lose your life simply because of a decision. In the process of decision making, uh, God tells us through the writer, lean not to your own understanding. And now here comes the question, because now I want to know, why am I not to lean on my understanding? The word for understanding from the Hebrew is an interesting word. It is sha'an, and it means uh, to lean on someone or something as on a staff or as on a hand. It means leaning on something that's strong. So here's what happens. I have now cast all my weight on something that is going to hold me up. And he says, lean not on thine own understanding. In other words, I don't want you to put the weight of this decision on your mental capacity and cognitive energy experience or ability. God is talking to somebody who is making 
a decision. And what God is saying is lean not on your own decision-making capacity. You need to talk to a confidant because you've got to watch who you lean on to help you to make decisions. Uh, oh, I feel that. You've got to watch who you allow input from before you decide to take an action. Because some people give advice that's self-serving. They advise you not for you, but they advise you for themselves. Oh, I feel this. Uh, and the question has to arise. Because I believe I've got some kind of smart. And so the question arises, why cannot I trust me? <laughs> Lord, why are you telling me this? Why cannot I trust myself? <laughs> After all, I've been through so many things. And I've come over so many hurdles. And I've dealt with enough people and I've had enough pain but I've had some pleasure so why is it that I cannot trust myself and the answer comes back and the answer is without any spiritual connection you are not complete yourself oh God I feel it here without you're not safe enough for yourself to make the decisions about yourself do you see what God is saying I mean uh, I mean he slapped me dead in the face what God is saying is that you don't have the capacity mentally to make the right decisions about yourself you need to lean on something other than yourself or someone other than yourself to make the right decision for yourself are you dare telling me that Lord that I don't have the capacity to make the right decisions for myself and God is saying no you don't because there's an element that you need that you don't have and you have to connect yourself to that element in order to make your decision making work can I preach like I feel it uh, to lean upon my own understanding he is saying is to lean on a broken reed which will pierce the hand as as Egypt proved when Israel leaned on Egypt. Uh, I'll give you a little history. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is coming and Nebuchadnezzar is coming to bring them into captivity because they wouldn't do the will of God. Because they did not want to take God's instruction, they decided they would make an allegiance with Egypt. So now they began to lean on Egypt. Here's how God talked about that. He said, Behold, thou trusteth upon a staff of this bruised reed. Can you imagine trying to lean on a fern? He says, You're leaning on a fern. On, and Egypt, if you lean on Egypt, it's going to pierce you because Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and everybody who trusts in him is going to fall. You can't listen to bad advice and make good decisions. Oh, I feel it here. I feel oh, God, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? You can't listen to people who don't have the knowledge and make good decisions. And you cannot decide to take somebody's advice against the advice of God. Why, why do I have it so difficult when it comes to making decisions? Because I'm ambivalent. I'm caught between my sensual perception and my faith. And what God is saying to me is take your eyes, your nose, your hearing out of your decisions and plug into my spirit. Because why should you not take advantage of my omniscience? When you have limited information, why shouldn't you take advantage of my omnipotence when you have limited strength? Why, why, why should you not take advantage of the God that I am when you can tap into me and I'll help you to decide which way to go? Uh, you've been going around in circles following your own decision. That's why every year it's the same situation. It's the same 
trial, it's the same problem. Uh, you need somebody to help you pick a man. Since, since you are doing every week, I got the same kind of folk following me. Every time I get with somebody, turn out to be the same way. Uh, every woman I ever had is always this way. Uh, every job I had, every time I bought a house, every person I deal with, it looked like I just gather all the crazy people around me. Oh, I think you need another way to make your decision. I think you need some help to decide who to be with. I think you need some power other than your own mind to determine how it's got to come out. Oh, I feel something here. Touch your neighbor and say, you're going to make the right one this time. Uh -huh, because you're going to make that decision with God. What happened? Why my decision making is so difficult? Because Adam chose against God. He made a choice that eliminated God. He decided to go for Eve instead of God. And so he went for the flesh. He went for the stimulation of the body. He went for the visage of the pulchritude and, and the euphonious sound of the voice. He went for the prettiness of the nose and the wonderful curve of the hips and he walked away from God now Paul speaks about it in this way in Romans 1 28 he says professing themselves to be wise they became fools and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient when God is not in your choice men will choose men when God is not a part of your choice making women will choose women uh, uh, when God is not a part of your choice making things get turned around because when God is not a part of who you choose you will not choose what's best for you you will choose what will mess up your life. Oh, you got to keep God. Touch your neighbor and say, keep God in this choice. There is one thing answers the other. You don't want God, then God says, I don't want you. If you don't want me in your business, you know how we get. You know God is the same way. You tell somebody in a minute, I don't want somebody that don't want me. If you don't love me, I will go on. Why you think God is any different? If you don't want God in your business, he'll stay out. But if God is out of your business, you'll have the same old stuff you had five years ago. Still following you, driving you crazy. You need to have God in the center of your business. So he turned them up to a mind that was cannot function or discharge as a mind a mind in which the divine distinctions of right and wrong were totally confused and lost so we end up with vision without direction we end up with aspiration without guidance we end up with plans without the ability to execute because in order to execute the vision in order to attain the aspiration in order for the plans to come true you need direction you need some who knows the way and who understands how to navigate I feel the Holy Ghost in here can I preach like I feel it everybody in here God is the director of your path and when God is out of the picture your life goes in all different directions because it's God that knows how to direct you come on help me Edwin come on help me Alonzo I got to preach it like I feel it. Tell your neighbor the devil wants you to collide with somebody. But God wants you to walk with somebody. I feel this thing here. When you don't have direction, you have aspiration, you got plans. But you don't know how to get there. So in the darkness of your confusion, you keep bumping 
on folk. Every time you move, you're bumping on folk. Now notice, if you will, if your life is guided by God and their life is not guided by God, I have the aspiration, but they become an obstacle when I have the aspiration, but not the direction. But when I put the divine chip in, God knows how to stare me around and move me through. For a good man's steps are on by the Lord. I feel like preaching in here. Touch your neighbor. Said, don't make another decision without God. Can I preach like I feel it? Now, if his steps and his steps are ordered by the Lord, we can move around each other and never touch each other because God knows how to move us around. And at the end of the day, instead of colliding with your woman or colliding with your man or colliding with your boss or colliding with your family when God begins to order steps folk won't walk into each other but they'll walk with each other because when God is handling the business it'll work out just right I feel like preaching here today touch three people say so let God God handle it. Let God handle your career. Let God handle your business. Let God work it for you. Don't make a decision without talking to God. I feel like preaching a minute. It's a funny thing that man doesn't even know his way. Yet in spite of not knowing his way, he's puffed up and full of pride. I have never seen so much proud folk going nowhere. I wish I could talk to you. Ain't going nowhere but bragging. You can't brag on nowhere. Here's what Jeremiah said. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is in not in man that walketh to direct his steps. I need divine guidance. I am too valuable to give my life up to any old thing. I need divine guidance. I'm calling on the city of refuge to join hands in here today and tell the Lord we need divine guidance in every situation, in every personal affair. I want God up in my Kool-Aid. Can I preach like I feel it? Give somebody a high five. Say, I'm not going down an aisle without God. I ain't signing a contract without God. I ain't going in business without God. I'm not going to have anything to do with it if God is not in it. I might as well preach like I feel it. He said trust in the Lord. And the word trust is bataha which means be stretched out. It's the sense of well-being and security. He said before you move to the next level, stretch out before God. Stretch out on him. I feel like we can hear. If I got to crawl, let me crawl. But I ain't moving till I get divine unction. I'm not doing it till I get direct from the Lord touch somebody and say stretch out stretch out till you hear his voice let him wait I feel like preaching you in too much of a hurry wait till I talk to God 
God. Wait till I hear from the Lord. Stretch out till you get the victory. I feel like reaching in here. Give somebody a high five and say, well, I will not make a decision without the God of my salvation. So can you go with me? If the Lord is with me, can you stay with me? If God is with me, can you hold me up? If God is on my side, touch your neighbor, say neighbor, let the Lord work it out. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct thy path. I hear the Lord saying, talk to me. I'll show you which way to go. Talk to me. I'll show you the deal to sign. Talk to me. You don't need no witch. You don't need your stars red. You don't need no horoscope. All you got to do is acknowledge me in all my ways. I'll show you the snakes. I'll show you the whisperers. I'll show you the liars. I feel like shouting in here. Shake somebody's hand. Like you're going to shake it off. And say, don't do it unless you talk to God. Don't say it unless you ask God. Don't walk till you talk to God. God will direct your path. And when God is directing no weapon for A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. I know you've heard it. I know you believe it. And I need God to order mine as well as yours. He needs to order all of us or else we'll all crash in great collision and just ruin everything that he has orchestrated for us. I'm going to pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we are giving you the right to direct our lives because we know, Lord, with your omnipotence, with your omniscience, we cannot go wrong to give it to you. So please, Lord, direct us, please. And we claim it done in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to come back next week for more of this great, great, great series. We are dealing with being back on track. Come back and see us on Fresh Oak.